Most modern active service tanks of one of the two biggest superpowers are M1A2 Sep V3 for United States of America and T90M for Russian Federation. While Russia has developed the new T-14 Armata, they still haven't accepted it into active service. So in this video, we will take a deep dive into the two main battle tanks and see how do they compare. Keep in mind that I will call M1A2 Sep V3 as M1A2 or Abrams during the video, but if I don't specifically mention it's another variant, assume I'm talking about Sep V3. Also, even though the M1A2C designation was going around as a new designation for the Sep V3, I couldn't find it being mentioned in any document. Every official information calls the tank M1A2 Sep V3. Now, first we will start with their firepower. T90M is armed with a 125mm smoothbore 2A46 M5 gun. Contrary to popular belief started by some media articles, it does not have the 2A82 gun from T14 Armata. That gun is much longer and the difference would be very noticeable. And in many official documents and reports, it is said that it is a 2A46 M5 gun. It can fire APFSDS, high explosive fragmentation and heat projectiles, as well as anti-tank guided missiles. The best APF SDS projectiles it can fire are depleted uranium 3BM-59 Svinets-1 and tungsten 3BM-60 Svinets-2. The most reliable information for the penetration of those projectiles I could find is 350mm on 60 degrees at 2 km for 3BM-59 and 300mm on 60 degrees at 2 km for 3BM-60, with both projectiles reportedly being 740mm long. Also, to avoid confusion, the data represents the thickness of the plate penetrated when it is angled at 60 degrees. The penetration on 0 degree plate would be much higher. If the data is correct, then 3BM59 is clearly better, but from what I could find, which wasn't really reliable, the reason why 3BM60 exists is for use on domestic soil because tungsten is far less toxic than depleted uranium. Also, keep in mind that the steel penetration does not represent the penetration of composite armors. Many tanks have different types of composites and the projectiles would perform differently on all of them. This is only to give basic information about the projectiles. High Explosive Fragmentation Projectile is supposed to be the new multi-purpose 3EOF-128 Telnik projectile with the air burst ability, direct hit and delayed fuse explosion. It has been demonstrated in the Russian T-90M documentary. Heat projectiles are kinda irrelevant, especially with the new high explosive fragmentation projectile. I don't really see much purpose for them. Maybe for shooting at bunkers? There are reportedly not only tandem-shaped ones, but ones with triple charges, although I haven't seen any concrete evidence of those being deployed. The anti-tag guided missile is the beam-riding tandem-shaped 9M119M1 Invar M missile. It is supposed to give good accuracy for very distant targets, from the ranges between 4 and 5 kilometers. But it's still a hollow charge, so it's not extremely useful against modern tanks. Abrams is armed with a 120mm smoothbore M256 or M256A1 gun. It can fire APF SDS and advanced multipurpose, or advanced high explosion projectile. The MA29A4 depleted uranium APFSDS is possibly the longest APFSDS projectile in active service, taking up the majority of the entire 984mm length of the entire shell. While there is no information on its penetration, I would say it is at least 400mm on 60 degree target, if not more. But what we do know is that it has enhanced effectiveness against heavy explosive reactive armor over its predecessor MA29A3. A new special tip of the projectile can be seen on the in-flight footage, which is what probably enhances its anti-ERA capabilities. Keep in mind that no specific ERA is mentioned in any official source for the projectile. It may have enhanced anti-ERA capabilities, but to claim it would go through certain ERA like hot knife through butter is just an assumption. The round is also reported to have data link, but what the data link actually does is still classified. The new advanced multipurpose projectile is also pretty neat. Just like the Russian one, it can airburst, detonate on impact, or with delayed fuse. What appears to be different though is that it can penetrate quite a bit of armor. 
On trials, it managed to penetrate the side turret of T-55, which should be from 100 to 160 mm at that spot, hard to tell. The round will be replacing canister and MPAT rounds, and if you ask me, it's really good that they are not bothered with heat shells any longer. A big plus. T-90M has seen many improvements in the fire control system over its predecessor, the T-90A. The tank is the only tank in active service in Russia that has an independent commander's thermal panoramic sight. All other tanks have old Soviet-era sights with passive image intensifiers, aka night vision. T-14 is the other tank in Russia that has that feature, but it is not yet in active service. The T-72B3 tanks have been confirmed to be equipped with new third-generation FEM-18 M3 thermals in their main gun sight, so it is more than safe to say that T-90M, which is far more expensive, has those integrated. And would go along with the fact that T-90MS used to have French third-generation Catherine XP from Thales. And since Russians moved to domestic thermals, this is more than likely especially since they produced around 500 of them in 2018 and 2019, and the production only grew. CATV is not the only unique thing about T-90M, it's also the only tank in Russian service that has a digital display for the commander. The main gun sight is reportedly PNMT, which is a Russian copy of the Sosna U sight previously used massively on their tanks. Optical magnification is probably 4 times and 12 times, which was the case on Sosna U. Thermals integrated in Sosna U provided maximum digital magnification of 12 times, since the thermals are displayed on a monitor separate from the site. A separate thermal display is also the case on T90M, but it is not yet known if the new thermals provide higher magnification. Both the gunner and commander have the same kind of display for their own thermals, so the case is the same for both of them. The tank also has a backup site called the Double, which can be used by both gunner and commander. I think I should mention that T-90M is the only tank in active service that gives the crew ability to close and open the sights from the inside. On tanks like T-72B3 and T-80BVM, the crew has to manually unbolt the covers of the sights from the outside, which is really bad since T-90M crew can just close them if they are under attack by artillery or something similar that has high chances of damaging the sights. T-90M received a new commander's cupola with a clear 360 degree view and a new hatch. In comparison, this is how the commander's cupola looks like on T-90A. The tank also got 360 degree camera coverage, so there are many ways for the commander to look around the tank. This is a comparison of the visibility out of T-90A and T-90M. Recently, one T-90M was shown with a retractable camera on the turret, which can be lifted up for spotting from cover, and that is extremely useful. It is currently being tested, and the test results will decide if it will actually be adopted. Now, M1A2 Sapphire sadly hasn't seen many improvements in the fire control system section. It still has second generation thermals for both the gunner and commander. But to be fair, it is really good second generation, probably the best, or at least one of the best second generation thermals out there. But nevertheless, it is second generation, and is thus inferior. The third generation forward-looking infrared has been planned for low-rate initial production in this year, but it's only for testing purposes. If it all goes well, the production and implementation should start in 2024 or 2025. The optical magnification of the main gun sight should be 12 times, but the digital zoom with the thermos of the main gun sight goes up to 50 times which is good for targeting very distant targets. But keep in mind that the zoom is digital, the quality does not scale. It should also be noted that unlike T90M, the gunner does not have a monitor, but the thermal is integrated into the site. The gunner just switches the channels from the day channel to the forward-looking infrared channel. On the other hand, the commander does have the monitor for the CITV. The tank did get color panels and the already mentioned data link system as part of the fire control system upgrades, as well as the ability for the gunner to look at what TC is seeing through the Kraus system, but as I said, there is not much. Speaking of Kraus, US is replacing all Kraus 2 systems with Kraus LP or low profile on their Abrams tanks, which is, as the name suggests, 
much smaller than the previous system and does not hinder the performance, so it's a really good change. T90M most likely features the same hull armor as its predecessor, but all the turrets for the tanks have been newly built. The armor can be the same, but there could also have been changes done to it. We don't know since no such information was disclosed. What is different though is the explosive reactive armor. Unlike T90A that has Contact 5 ERA equipped, T90M is equipped with Relict, which improves a lot over Contact 5 since it increases the protection against all types of projectiles, as well as tandem shaped heat. It offers better protection because of the way it works. Contact 5 launches one steel plate forward towards the impact of whatever hit it, but Relict launches two plates in opposite directions. This is why it is slightly spaced away from the armor, and on the turret, if you look closely, there is space between the overlapping bricks. Just for this very reason. According to the manufacturer Ni Stali, Relict offers protection even against MA29A3, which has been reported to have anti ERA capabilities. How true is that? I don't know, this is just what the manufacturer claims. It should also be noted that the coverage provided by Relict is far superior to the coverage of Contact 5 on T90A, and that alone increases the tank's survivability. The sides of the hull are equipped with Relict side ERA panels, and the bagged ERA can be mounted over. One portion of the hull is protected by slat or cage armor. The sides of the turret are also equipped with ERA blocks. The bagged ERA is reportedly 4S24, which has extremely low effect on the vehicle it is mounted on and has mainly been developed for low armored vehicles, since other ERA has risks of damaging the vehicles they are mounted on, and as such it is perfect for mounting over other ERA blocks since it has very low chances of activating them, thus the combination with the relict with it is extremely good. One very important thing to note is that Relict provides protection against top attack explosively formed penetrators, such as the ones of TOE 2B. This was until recently not disclosed by the manufacturer and some have assumed it can't protect against such threats, but it seems like it actually can. So this is a part of history for T90 tanks. Other improvements in protection include the anti-RPG net which can be seen on some tanks, not all of them though. This is meant to either neutralize incoming rocket or missile, or divert it from hitting the exposed turret ring by swinging it into the ERA. Either way, it's useful. The protection is further increased by aramid cover on the vehicles inside, which is meant as a spall liner to reduce the after-armor effects of penetrating projectiles. The extra ammunition in the hull has been moved to the external rack on the turret's back, which has blowout panels. Keep in mind that the ammunition in the outloader's carousel is still present. But according to a Russian study, the main reason for catastrophic explosions was the very ammunition outside of the carousel, since it was dispersed around the tank and some of it was even mounted on the turret's wall, which drastically increases the chances of it being hit and thus destroying the tank. This has now been fixed with the mentioned bustle rack. In the T90 MS presentation from Ural Wagon Zavod, the manufacturer, the tank is equipped with extra carousel protection which also decreases the chances of the ammunition detonation. But it is unknown if the serial T90 M tanks are equipped with such protection. In the very few production images, only the top cover of the carousel can be seen but the T90A and other T-72 type vehicles already have this kind of cover. The improvement is supposed to protect the sides of the carousel, and sadly, we don't have the confirmation on that. Some weaknesses need to be pointed out though. The hull design still follows the old Soviet T-64 design, and as such, has a weak spot under the periscope since the armor has to be cut in front of the periscope to be mounted. The turret design also leaves the turret ring slightly more exposed when compared to older T-series tanks. This is slightly remedied by the previously mentioned RPG net, but it should be pointed out nevertheless. M1A2 SEP 3 received many improvements in its protection. In the same document that gives us the information about the thermals, it is noted that both turret and hull received the upgraded protection. On closer inspection it can be seen that the turret is indeed thicker, but the thickness of the hull can sadly not be increased. 
but you don't need to increase the thickness in order to increase the protection. It is completely unknown how much of a protection increase the new armor package provides, but there is no doubt in my mind that the turret is vastly better protected than the hull. Yes, the protection has been increased in both areas, but since they chose to actually increase the turret's thickness, it's certain the increase in protection is larger on the turret, otherwise there wouldn't be a need to increase its thickness. But that doesn't matter, since US is installing Trophy Hardkill active protection system on their tanks. Trophy is meant to engage the incoming rockets and missiles and stop them before they even hit the tank. And those are the most common threats to the tanks on the modern battlefield. This gives Abrams a massive advantage in protection. The tank can also be equipped with Tusk 2 package if necessary, which would, this time, only mount ERA on the hull sides since the turret sides are occupied by Trophy. The ERA also offers the protection against tandem shaped heat by having one explosive panel over the brick, which is meant to activate the tandem charge before striking the main block. When not equipped with Tusk 2, which is meant only for urban operations, the side protection is not the greatest. The hull sides are protected by old, thin composite side skirts, which cover a bit over a half of the tank on the right side and only one third on the left side of the tank. The rest of the skirts are just standard steel plates. Also, everything else on the hull is just simple steel, not even thick steel at that. The turret on the other side has composite armor on the sides, but it is unknown if it has ever been upgraded, and the statement from the document doesn't even help us in that either, but nevertheless it is better than the hull side protection. I think what I'm about to say is common knowledge, but I will say it anyway. Abrams has all ammunition located in ammo racks behind the blast doors that are equipped with blowout panels. One ready rack behind the loader, one rack behind the commander, and one rack in the hull. The hull rack has blowout panels on the belly of the tank. One important weakness is the upper front plate, which is probably only a 38mm thick steel plate which doesn't offer any decent protection, especially if the hit comes just slightly from above. And just like the T90M, Abrams has a turret ring which is more exposed than its colleagues, in this case other NATO tanks like Leopard 2 for example. Most of my rambling about the weaknesses is kinda irrelevant because Trophy would neutralize most of the threats fired at the tank, and thus makes weak spots kinda irrelevant. One very important thing to note though, while T90M does not have any kind of hard kill system now, Russia has one developed, Arena M. The trials of this system have been shown and it works well against rockets and missiles. Russian tanks are supposed to start receiving the system somewhere around 2025, on T90M the system will replace the side ERA blocks. So it is very likely that in the close future we will start seeing T90M tanks going around with hard kill APS. Now it is important to mention that if we consider that both tanks will be equipped with hard kill systems in the near future, then the side protection of T90M will be much better. Why? Well the only threat to worry about then would be APF as yes fired from other tanks. And Abrams Having only 65mm thick composite, only meant to increase heat protection that doesn't even cover the entire sides, and the ERA which is only designed against heat as well, will drastically fall behind T90M since T90M has relic ERA on the sides, which works against both kinetic energy and high explosive anti-tank threats. Combined with thinner base side armor, that would mean that Abrams' side can be penetrated by other tanks at much steeper angles where T90M's relict would actually degrade the penetration of APF SDS and thus requiring for the tanks to take the shots closer to the side. This is a problem in general with Abrams, not necessarily if it was to fight T90M, but literally any tank. T90M is powered by a 1130 horsepower V92 S2F diesel multifuel engine. This engine is a further improvement of the V92 S2 1000 horsepower engine used on T90A. Maximum torque achieved by the engine is 4,533 Nm, which is pretty neat for an engine of that size. The tank weighs 48 tons, which is 2 tons heavier than T90A. This gives us a power to weight ratio of 23.5 horsepower per ton. The tank received a new automatic gear shift, which is better than the manual of T90A. 
But according to the footage from the construction of the vehicle in a factory, it appears that the tank doesn't have a steering wheel as previously claimed, but still retains the old stick control we can see on T-72 and T-90 tanks. This is very disappointing in my opinion, since Russians themselves claim that the training for drivers is drastically reduced when implementing steering wheels instead of stick controls, but I guess since they put so much money into the tank, they wanted to make some cuts. It could be that, or the tank in question is an upgrade of a T90A or T90 Model 1992, and they haven't implemented the steering wheel yet since the tank is clearly not fully put together. I don't know. Some sources claim that the reverse speed has been increased, but it seems like every source claims something different. From 5 km per hour of T90A to either 8, 11, 15 or sometimes even 30 km per hour. And the worst thing is that none of those sources are actually official. If someone has reliable information about this, please let me know. In recent military exercises, Russia has demonstrated some tank tactics that relied on the tanks reversing. Which is painful, considering that their reverse speeds are 5 km per hour on T-72 and T-90 tanks. For T-80 tanks, it's not that bad since their reverse speed is 11 or 12 km per hour. M1A2 Sep 3 is powered by 1500 horsepower gas turbine HT 1500 engine, which has practically been on Abrams since the start. This is a more powerful engine, which can produce a maximum torque of 5355 newton meters. But even though the engine is much stronger, Abrams does suffer from the massive weight increase. According to the official USAASC website, M1A2 SEP 3 weighs 73.6 short tons, or 66.7 metric tons. This already gives us a power to weight ratio of 22.5 horsepower per ton, which is less than T90M. But here is the biggest problem Trophy system gives Abrams additional 8,600 pounds, which is 3.9 tons. This puts M1A2 SEP 3 over 70 metric tons, 70.6 to be exact. And no, the previous weight was not with Trophy, since the website lists the weights of other Abrams tanks, which gives us a weight comparison to Sepway 2, which is not that drastic for bare vehicles. So weighting 70.6 tons with Trophy, that would give us a power to weight ratio of 21.2 horsepower per ton, which is noticeably less than T90M. This is not only a problem for mobility, but also for transportation of the vehicles and bridge crossing, Abrams does have fully automatic transmission though, and a very good reverse speed of 40 km per hour, which is really good, especially for their tactics. Now, one could argue that T90M is cheaper and that that would make it more available than the American Abrams tank, but that is far from the truth. Russia simply lacks the production capability that US has, mainly because US has been operating only one type of tank for the last 40 years, and have only been upgrading it ever since. Russia, on the other hand, has three different tank variants, T-72, T-80 and T-90, all having their own sub-variants that are also very different from each other. That is a problem because they still haven't put their minds into producing one vehicle, and as such, they are stuck upgrading very old vehicles, while Abrams has been upgraded over and over again. Russian T-72B and T-80 BV tanks are basically old tanks from the 80s, with added explosive reactive armor and thermals for the gunner with new autoloaders so they can fire latest ammunition. They can't be compared to Abrams and T90M. This leaves a very limited amount of resources to produce and upgrade T90M tanks. While M1A2 currently lags behind in fire control system, it won't be for long. M1A2 SEPV4's main feature will be the new third generation thermals. This would put Abrams' firepower and fire control system slightly ahead of T90M, but at that time T90M is promised to receive the hard kill active protection system, making their protection equal and its light weight and mobility will surely still surpass the one of Abrams. And who knows, we might see some upgrades of the two tanks in the future that no one was expecting, but for now, I would say they are both pretty good for the countries that are operating them. T90M would surely not be good for US and Abrams not for Russia, so they both develop something that would suit their needs. Just, it would be good if Russia would focus on only producing T90M tanks. But that would be all. If you like my content, you can consider supporting me on Patreon. And if you can't, leave a like or subscribe if you're new.
and I will see you all in the next video. Have a nice day.